I'm Don Pettit, and we have Dan Burbank here. We're on the International Space Station, and we're doing a demonstration with didgeridoos and oscillation of spheres of water. And we've seen on an earlier uh, science episode uh, what happens when I put a drop of water, or actually a fairly large sphere of water on the speaker, and I drove it with pure sine wave tones from my MP3 player. And and it drove the water sphere into some delightful oscillations. And so what we're doing now is live, real time, no recording. We're going to drive sphere oscillations with the melodious notes from our orbital didgeridoo. Now, I didn't happen to bring a didgeridoo with me on this mission. There's not a lot of room in the soil used to put a didgeridoo. So we cobbled one up from the space station vacuum cleaner hose. So I got to play the didgeridoo. I'm not really that much of a musician, and I certainly don't look like one. And you know, the kind of people that play didgeridoos, they look pretty much like musicians. And maybe, maybe I better do something so I look a little bit more like a didgeridoo player. Stand by. So I got a pair of scissors and I made my crew shirt into a real musician didgeridoos kind of attire. And so I can play my didgeridoo now. It's a good thing we have towels set up all around here to catch these flying drops. And watch this. Now, I'm going to make these big, and they're not going to spall off as much water now. That's kind of interesting. Now, let me change out the right angle adapter for the crevice tool, and let's see how it sounds. And what we're going to do now is we're going to hook two hoses together and listen to the sound. Now, I'm going to be out of the camera picture because this is a long didgeridoo, and, uh, but it makes a real cool sound. So listen. done, we can clean up space station and vacuum out all the, the HEPA filters that collect all the little uh, dust bunnies and thades that are generated during the course of a week's worth of activity. Any summary? So there's a lot of very interesting science going on here, and essentially what you're doing is creating resonance down the length of a hose, and the hoses are kind of tuned um, generally to a specific note. And if you change the, uh, the outlet end of it here, you can uh, change where the nodes are in that wave, for example. So um, we're hypothesizing that by putting this right angle um, adapter on it, that essentially you're, you're cutting the frequency in half 
um, and making it a higher pitch because you're essentially anchoring a node here. There'll be a node at this end, and you'll essentially have a standing wave down the length of this um, hose. With two hoses, and, and if you were to move it and put the crevice tool, our thinking is that, uh, that you've now got a, a, a pitch of a tone that's about uh, half of that, so it's a much lower tone. And then if you attach uh, two ends of the hose or two hoses together, it's getting lower still. And uh, so it's really interesting, and it's also very interesting to see how the size of the spheres is affected by the tone. So the spheres are, are tuned, and you can excite a mode in those, and it's dependent upon the tone as well. So it's an interesting mix of science, music, a little bit of culture, and uh, a little bit of uh, cleaning supplies on board space station. So uh, anyways, it's, uh, it's uh, always an interesting, um, interesting exercise to look at all the things around you and try to look at them in a different way.